Hey guys, I uh, wanted to do a quick video on my travel first aid kit. Uh, I take this whenever I go camping. I throw it in the back of the four wheel drive, it's in the back of the truck. Uh, it's just a light duty, sort of medium duty first aid kit for maybe bigger cuts and injuries. Not just like a band aid boo boo type uh, first aid kit. So, uh, I'm going to talk about it, okay? So, first thing, I have it in this case here. Okay, so let me put the camera down so you guys have seen it. So I have it in this uh, travel case. Sorry, I can't get any further away, so it's going to be a little close. And uh, it unfolds like this, right? It unfolds, trifold like that. In the first uh, compartment, I have some kind of calamine. If you run into like a poison ivy or something, poison oak. In the second one, I have these uh, pocket uh, respirators. Basically, it fits over, you can use it, you know, giving people mouth to mouth. It fits like a oxygen mask over their face, and then you just blow into a hose as, as a check valve. So that's a good, good thing to have. And the main compartment, I squeeze in this box. Okay, so I took it out because it's a little bit of a tight fit. And so I took it out, so I'm not fighting with it on camera. But this is what I have in the main compartment, okay? So, I'll go over those and see what's inside. So the box itself is a uh, inexpensive $10 Johnson & Johnson first aid box, okay? It comes with basically band-aids in it. Uh, you can see it has some kind of butterfly band-aid, it has regular boo-boo band-aids, has some square ones, has a little bit of gauze, and has some um, medical tape. But mostly it's full of band-aids, okay? But I like the box, and I like that it fits in there, and I needed a few band-aids, and it's 10 bucks, so I bought it, okay? But you can use whatever box fits fits your needs. So I zip it up. So I packed it with my own stuff. I took out most of the old band-aids, and I just put my own stuff in here, so let's, sorry. Let's take a look and see what's inside, okay? Let me adjust the camera here a little bit. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look and see what's inside. So right on top, I have medical grade scissors. These things are for cutting off clothes or cutting bandages or cutting gauze. They are not regular scissors. They have some kind of serrations on them and they're really heavy duty, okay? I got these from Army Surplus Store, but you can buy them from a medical store or CVS or somewhere, okay? And this stuff's really tightly packed, so I'll try to not mess up my order too much. Second, this is the little book that came with the first aid kit. You know, it doesn't hurt, it's flat, and it's uh, it fits in there. And it just talks about basics, you know, assessing the situation, and, you know, you know, just some basic stuff, okay? What to do if you got a penetrating object, a stick, heat exhaustion, cold exposure, heat stroke, frostbite. Here's a uh, index of what's in it. And maybe just some things for you to think about when you're making your first aid kit. Next up is uh, these little medical kits you get from the dollar store. Again, I just gutted it, came full of band-aids, I just gutted it and I uh, put my own stuff in here. I uh, buy a little, I have a little Advil packets, Tylenol packets, a few regular band-aids, uh, some first aid cream, although I have other ones, mostly band-aids. The most important thing in this box that I've used quite a bit is tweezers, okay? So tweezers are one thing that if you don't have it, nothing else will take its place, <laughs> okay? Uh, they, you, you, you just don't have the fingers and you, there's nothing will take the place of a tweezer. But one thing I want to bring to your attention is don't get cheap tweezers. So these are dollar store inexpensive tweezers. And you see how they're kind of rounded on the ends, right? They're kind of beveled. You don't want that if possible. What you want is tweezers that are razor sharp like this, flat on the ends, okay? And the reason for that is if you've got a real small splinter, you want something that's gonna go real flush and pull it out, okay? These rounded ones, just by their construction, they don't really do a good job of um, 
pulling out real small splinters because of that little bevel right there. And so the tips make contact, but I don't know, they don't work. You want these ones that are flat and kind of milled and machined and this razor sharp flat on the end. Not something that's kind of rounded and beveled and you know, it doesn't make contact. See how kind of not very good these are? So remember that, okay? Close those up, put them back. But th this little box is the one I go to the most and sort of fishing around inside the box, big box, I just have them sitting on top here, okay? Next is a small little uh, trash bag for bloody bandages, bloody clothes, or just a piece of plastic if you need to wrap up an injury. Keep water off of it, little plastic bag. Uh, next is hydrocortisone. This is for if you have a bump or if you have an itch or if you run into some kind of poison oak, poison ivy. I have that. Uh, I have oral analgesic cream. This is from also from the this is from the dollar store actually, but you can get this is the equivalent of Oragel. So if you bite your tongue or if you chip your tooth or if you uh, have some kind of mouth injury, right? Uh, this will help keep the pain down, kind of keep things clean and neat. Next, I just have a little bottle of distilled water. This is a little squeeze bottle. I don't know where I got it from, but I just keep a little bit of distilled water in it. I have it sealed up with some saran wrap to give it a tight seal. But basically, it's if you get something in your eye, you need to flush out your eye. If you need to flush out uh, a cut. Uh, you can also buy saline solution bottles of this size, but I just have a little water in here. And I packed it so I know it's clean water. And again, it's just for emergency only. Next is gauze. Uh, I think this is uh, 3 by 3 inch gauze, they call this. And gauze is important. Okay, here's why. If you have a cut and you're bleeding, simply putting a piece of t-shirt or putting some kind of paper towels or putting napkins on it is not going to stop the bleeding. There's some kind of magic in gauze and I don't know what it is. It's, this is just sterile gauze, it's just cotton cloth. But because of the shape and the way it's woven together, as soon as you put it on a bleeding cut, it will re reduce the bleeding drastically. It almost is like some kind of blood stopper in itself. Okay. So, you know, I, I carry quite a bit of this stuff. I got three of the small ones, and I think I may have some more of the bigger ones. I'm messing up the box here for you guys, but because this thing is so tightly packed, I may never get it back together. But I'm going to do it for you. So, I have, here's a short, here's a two inch one, and here's a, some three inch ones. Learn how to use gauze. If you got a big cut, gauze will stop the bleeding. Nail clippers, uh, good for cutting stuff, good for cutting sutures, threads, uh, cutting nail of course. If you injure your nail, you split it or you break it or whatever, you can cut it off. Also if you got them little dry skin things that come on the side here, that's the best way to cut them off is with the nail clipper. Um, hang nails, cuticles, whatever. Even Maybe even pulling small, pulling medium sized uh, splinters out if you don't have a, uh, if you don't have a uh, tweezer. Okay, because these things are razor sharp. Just look at that. So they'll catch on to the smallest tweezer, smallest splinter. Ice pack. This is one of those ice packs that, uh, well, let me just leave this in here because it fits. This is one of those ice packs that uh, you, uh, you just bump it with your fist and you break some kind of chemical in here and then uh, it turns cold, some kind of chemical reaction. Good if you have a bruise or sprain or whatever, you know. This is medical tape, you can tape on your gauze with this thing. Okay, put that aside. A little baggie of some latex gloves. Uh, pads, non-stick pads. So if you have a big cut or you have a big burn or whatever, you can put these things on top and tie it up with the tape. And basically, these are these don't stick to um, they don't stick to your skin, okay? So when you, if you want to change a dressing and you need to take it off, these things come off and it's not going to take off a bunch of scabs and blood and whatnot. So I got three or four of these things in here. Okay, then here's another big gauze pad. I'm going to leave it in there because it's the one on the bottom. So another big gauze pad. 
let's see what we have here. Here we have some smaller gauze pads. If you have real small cuts, you don't have to use your big gauze pad. So I got a bunch of those, maybe six, seven of them. And on the back here, some hand cleansing wipes. This is basically just alcohol, okay, on a wipe. here more hand cleansing wipes this is triple antibiotic cream neurosporin kind of equivalent so that's nice handy to have that's just an empty ziploc bag just in case another piece of gauze down there over here on the back you can tell I have a lot of gauze how much faith I have in gauze right Here's some wet wipes just to clean your hands before you start working on uh, your patient or yourself. Here's another little piece of gauze. More gauze. Also remember when you start, if you have a bleed, you're going to go through a lot of this gauze really fast, okay? Because um, once the gauze gets soaked up with blood, you just put another gauze on top of the old gauze and tie it on. Okay, uh, so you could end up with five, you could use all of those gauzes on a, on a cut, you know, like that size, right? If you cut yourself right there about this size, you could, you could end up using half of this gauze on just that one cut. So it's not something you want to have a little, you want a lot of it. In this bag here, I have some antidiuretic pills uh, and some cotton balls. Let's see what else is in here. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, so it's anti-diarrheal for the bottom one. Yeah, it's all anti-diarrheal pills in here, okay? Two different types, I think. So that's good to have because, you know, if you're, on the, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you got the runs, that could dehydrate you. You could get really sick. That could kill you even. Nothing will do the job like this. Uh, another box of gloves in there. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, I know you could put a lot more stuff in here. I've thought about putting a little package of sutures in here with a needle, you know, the sealed up ones, just in case you have a big cut. Uh, I know basic suturing, it won't be pretty, but it will close up a wound. Uh, and you could add stuff, right, depending on what your particular situation is. I thought I had some burn gel and stuff in here, and maybe I do. Maybe I think it's inside the uh, small white box, this, this white box. It's in the bottom. It's burn gel, basically. It's a little package. If you get a burn, you can apply it. But again, it's nothing the Neosporin want to handle. But yeah, this is just some thoughts for you guys to start thinking about something a little bit bigger than a simple boo-boo uh, box, right? Um, and when you're on the road, you don't have access to stuff. So buy good stuff, put good stuff in here. Uh, if you need a bigger case, if you need a bigger case, a bigger kit, uh, get a bigger kit, get a bigger case, you know, if you think you're going to need blood stoppers, or if you're going to need, uh, you know, sutures, throw them in here. This is just what I think I need for my small trips, uh, for roadside car accidents maybe, small car accident, bumps, head bumps, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, hope this helps.